Hello, so today we're going to install the Plan 9 front operating system, which is a fork of the Plan 9 operating system from Bell Labs, and we're going to be installing it into a virtual box a virtual machine. So first things first, we need to go to the 9front.org website, which is just 9front.org, and we're going to go to the ISO tab on the left-hand side, and we're going to download the latest ISO. Uh, the, it's prominently displayed here. It comes in a gzip format archive, which pretty much any standard operating system should be able to open. Um, and I already have this downloaded, so I'm just going to go ahead and start making the virtual machine. Uh, you might have to rename the ISO when it comes out of the archive. It might just say data. If you just rename it to data.iso, everything should work fine and be recognized properly. Uh, so first things first, we need to name it. Uh, we're just going to name it Plan 9 Front in this case. The name doesn't especially matter. What matters a little bit more is how VirtualBox handles it. So we want to select Other, uh, since it's not Linux, since it's not BSD. And we want to select Other Unknown 64-bit. Uh, you could select 32-bit, as there is a 32-bit kernel, but you'll probably want to be running the 64-bit kernel. So going with 64-bit is a safe bet. The amount of memory also doesn't especially matter. It can operate with, I think, as little as about half a gig and be A-OK -okay with pretty much everything you do. Uh, I'm just going to give it two gigs here because I can spare it. Uh, we're going to create a virtual hard disk and just go with the defaults here. Dynamically allocated, of course. Uh, 10 gigs is safe if we use, use HJFS. Uh, if we want to do CWFS, which is the cache worm style file system that Plan 9 traditionally uses, uh, we'd need more since it doesn't like having a small disk, but in this case we can get away with just having about 10 gigs. If you wanted to use CWFS for whatever reason, uh, you'd need 15 or more, I think, uh, to make it happy. But I haven't tested this extensively, so your mileage may vary. So now we have a virtual machine here. We're just going to have to go in and tweak a few settings, and then we'll go about the install process. So the first things we want to go in and change uh, we do want to add the ISO, of course, so that when the virtual machine boots, we get the installer, you know, not just an empty disk. So we'll select data.iso, and this will make sure that we boot into the installer. Uh, we want to change the audio controller to Sound Blaster 16, leave host audio driver as the default. Uh, Sound Blaster 16 is one of the cards that Ninefront has drivers for. So this will let us get audio if we want to use the NES emulator or something like that. Uh, for the network, we do want to change the adapter type, though we want to leave this attached to NAT for internet. Um, if you want to draw term into your box, you can add another network adapter and make it a host only adapter. I have instructions on postnix.us for this, but I won't go into that here. Uh, so for the adapter type, you can just use uh, Intel Pro 1000 MT desktop or Intel Pro 1000 MT server. I'm just going to use desktop. Uh, USB 2.0 forwarding does work. I think even 3.0 should work uh, as we have drivers for it, but we don't really need to worry about that unless you have the extension pack installed. So we'll go about starting the virtual machine here. All right, so we're dropped to this Budargs proof, uh, prompt, and we're given the options for TCP, TLS, IL, local device. It gives us a default of slash dev slash SDD0. Uh, this is the one we want, as this is the CD installer. We want to use the default user Glenda. Uh, please don't change that. Even if you want to have a different user later, this is the user on the installer. We can go with all the defaults here, more or less. Uh, it's going to prompt us one last time for mouse port. PS2 is the default, and that's fine. Give it a moment to recognize it, and we're dropped to Rio, which is where we want to be. So Rio is the graphical user interface for Plan 9, uh, specifically Plan 9 front in this case. And we're going to start the installer with INST slash start. And we basically just press enter through all these prompts. Uh, for this prompt, we do want to change the file system to HJFS. Uh, if you want to use the cache worm, you select CWFS 64X. Uh, but we're just looking to make a lightweight install, so HJFS is fine. It's going to auto partition the disk for us. We do have to specify which disk we want to use. We don't want to use SDD0, we want to use SDC0, as that's the hard disk. Partitioning the CD-ROM won't do much good. 
uh, we can go, I'm going with MBR. You could go with GPT. Uh, I'm not sure if it works in VirtualBox, but I know MBR works. Uh, this is just fdisk, w writes, q quits. We'll let it, we'll just use the defaults that the installer wants to use. I'll just press enter through most of these prompts, wq at the partitioning prompts. We'll let it use whatever amount of RAM it wants. We want to ream the file system. We do have local as our source for the distribution as it's on the CD. Uh, we will let it configure the network. DHCP is fine since we have the NAT running. It's going to mount the distribution. It is located at slash. Okay, location of archives is also at slash. And then we select copy disk. This is the longest step, and it's copying all the files from the installer to the virtual machine disk. All right, now that install has concluded, we can move on to NDB setup. Uh, the install can take a different amount of time for different people. Uh, it takes probably about five minutes on my end, but I've seen it take up to about 10 minutes or so on a slower machine. Uh, so we're into NDB setup. Uh, we can give it whatever system name we want here. What you pick doesn't matter. Cerno is the default. It is a reference to a Toho character. Uh, time zone setup, there's this big list. Uh, I'm going to use US Central. Just pick whichever one is best for you out of this list. It is case sensitive. Boot setup. Mostly go with the defaults here. Uh, master, boost, master boot record is something we want to install. We do want to mark the Plan 9 partition active. We'll let it finish. And we've completed the install. So all we really need to do now. Oh, it's going to reboot for us, uh, but we'll need to remove the CD, which we just go devices, optical drives, and uncheck data.iso. And though this will change the next time it boots, since it rebooted with the CD drive in, I can just go in and select the SDC0 data uh, partition, and it will boot from my hard drive. Oh. You need to use FS, my bad. Go with PS2, and here we go. So if we touch test.txt, and if we reboot it with FS halt, we'd see our files here. And that's it. I mean, that's your standard install after it boots for the next time, I and mean, you can go through and then just hit enter through the prompts more or less. Your default user is Glenda, and you can refer to fqa.ninefront.org if you have further questions post-install or you're wondering what to do uh, to add more features, users, or whatever have you.